Hello and welcome to yet another episode of People and Places, the new program from the IDEM, we, where we explore people and places that have impacted people who have contributed in a big manner to our society, to our country. And in this episode, we have Balagopal Chandrasekhar. Balagopal, as he is widely known, and many of his friends call him Bala. So the item considers him a friend, and we have called this program People and Places with Bala. Balaji, welcome to People and Places again. In the last episode, we have discussed a place, of course, a very important place called Manipur. And in this episode, we are going to discuss, talk about a personality who has impacted your life in a very big manner. Professor Sivaraj Rabusheshan, a man wedded to science, but who has contributed in very many areas, including your entrepreneurship. I have heard that uh, your association with him started when you invited him to become the leader of your company in the sense the leader end of your company. So can you just tell us how this equation started and how he has impacted them? When I um, entered into the know-how transfer agreement with the National Research Development Corporation, I knew that I will have to develop a very close working relationship with the Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute. While I had the uh, confidence that Dr. M. S. Valiathan, the then director, and Professor A. V. Ramani, the then head of the Biomedical Technology Wing, would support me, I needed to ensure that uh, the support would uh, be deep and would be, uh, and that they would uh, uh, not have any reservations. Because I knew that otherwise, as a start, as a fledgling startup. Uh, taking an untried technology and trying to commercialize it for the first time in the country, the odds were stacked against us. Which year was this? This was in 1983-84. So, I discussed this, this aspect with Professor Ramani and uh, it was his suggestion that uh, he said, why don't you meet Professor Shivaraj Ramasesham, who at that time was not only Dr. Valiathan's mentor, but Dr. Shivraj Ramasajan was also chairman of the Technology Development Committee of Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute. And he said, if you could get somebody like Professor Shivraj Ramasajan as the chairman of your company, that would, uh, and ours was a joint venture company with KSIDC. Now to get that done, I first had to get the OK of KSIDC, because KSIDC had the right to nominate the chairman of the, on the board. So I went and met the then chairman of KSIDC, who was a very senior IAS officer, Mr. S. Padma Kumar. And he very readily uh, agreed, saying that uh, if he even offered to come to Bangalore to meet Professor Ram Seshan. I told him I will go and uh, meet him myself and I will see. So I went to uh, the Raman Research Institute because Professor Ram Seshan had by then retired as director of Indian Institute of He Science. was also the nephew of Dr. Sini yeah. Rabin. And um, he was the brother of uh, S. Chandrasekhar who discovered liquid crystals. <laughs> and brother of uh, another brilliant younger uh, 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 sibling, um, um, I think his name was Pancharatna, who died uh, tragically very early while he was a uh, professor in Cambridge or Oxford in physics. So he, came, he comes from a long, and S. Chandrash, the other Chandrasekhar, astrophysicist and Nobel laureate, uh, was another cousin of Professor Ram Seshar. Very illustrious so, family. Very illustrious family, the two Nobel laureates in the family. So, I, I met the Professor Ram Seshar. My first meeting with him was in the, in the room which he occupied, which was the former room of uh, Dr. Sir C. V. Raman. Okay. So, uh, of course, he did not sit in Sir C. V. Raman's chair. He sat in another desk on the side out of respect for the great man. And I remember Professor Ram Seshan was quite baffled. Uh, he asked me, why are you asking me to come as chairman of your board? I don't know anything about uh, companies and uh, corporate and uh, commercial matters. So I said, sir, my main purpose to get you on the board is to get uh, to ensure thereby that there will be complete uh, support and cooperation from the Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute while uh, Dr. Valiathan and Dr. Professor Ramani have offered me all the thing, all that support, I felt that your presence would be 
So he chuckled when he heard that and he readily agreed on that. And that was after that started what I would say, and not only a relationship as a, um, between a chairman and managing director, but uh, it was like a, fr- a very deep friendship. After And uh, since in the early days, Professor Ramasajan was such a remarkable man, so disarming in, and so humble despite his international stature and all the great positions which he had occupied, that when we traveled on work, if we went to Delhi or we went to Bombay, we shared a hotel room just so that we could uh, save uh, on the money. Uh, save on the money because my company couldn't afford it. And I remember uh, many in, uh, amusing incidents arising out of this. We had to go for a meeting in Hyderabad and we were staying in a hotel. And uh, we were sharing a room and Professor Ramasajan was uh, having a bath while I was sitting outside reading the newspaper and there was a knock on the door. This must have been in the uh, late 1980s. There was a knock on the door and I opened the door and I found a, a person with long white hair and a harassed expression on his face saying, he looked up, he saw me, he looked puzzled, then he looked up at the door and then he asked me, is this Professor Ramasajan's room? I said, yes, this is his room, we are sharing the room. And then I said, uh, um, um, you know, will you please come in uh, and you can wait? He said, yes. So then I said, who shall I say has come? He said, tell him that Kalam has come. So, <laughs> so I, I went and knocked on the door and said, sir, Professor Abdul Kalam is here. APJ Kalam is here to meet you. I didn't know who Kalam was. I said, APJ Kalam is. Ah, then uh, Professor Ram Session shouted through the door in Tamil yes. to um, uh, Professor Kalam, to Dr. Kalam saying that, uh, you know, I'll be out in five minutes. And then he came out clad only in a torta and they continued their <laughs> conversation in Tamil. <laughs> so, and there were yeah, many yeah. other such uh, incidents. Yes. No, you're saying that, you know, that he, so first of the action was he doesn't know about corporates, he doesn't know yeah, about company yeah. and all that. But the point is the technology that you were trying to kind of, you know, uh, the, that was the main yeah. uh, driving force of your company. Uh, of course, Professor Ramasajan must have, uh, uh, must have been, Quite uh, well known. Uh, we must have known about that topic. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, can you tell us something about that kind of exchange that you? What was really um, extraordinary about uh, um, um, uh, a scientist like Professor Ramasajan? Professor Ramasajan was one of the world's foremost X-ray crystallographers. You know, uh, Dame Dorothy Hodgkin, who was teaching in uh, Cambridge or Oxford, uh, who got the Nobel Prize for um, identifying the structure of uh, the insulin. Um, molecule using X-ray crystals. She was uh, also a great eminent X-ray crystallographer. So what I'm saying is Professor Ramasajan was into basic science. But he also had this tremendous ability to connect whatever he, uh, all the science which he was doing with the real world. He never felt a, a, that these two were disconnected. And that was what was a really remarkable about him. So he, all, he had a keen interest in everything technical. He wanted to know how everything worked. He used to ask simple questions and he mostly knew the answers of most of those things. But he asked even the simplest of questions. So Professor Ramasajan's guidance at various stages of our uh, research and in smoothing the way for the technology transfer to happen between uh, the institute and um, the other and, and us and the, um, and the transferee were, I was I, I think uh, that we, we cannot uh, underestimate uh, that uh, uh, role. It was phenomenal. Uh, Did you have a role in uh, kind of identifying your other stakeholders? Like, for example, you were essentially transferring this uh, know-how. Uh, was it was it just between the government and your company, and was it was it also there must have been other stakeholders involved in the in the operations of the company. No, actually, at that stage, it was primarily between Chitra Tirunal Institute and me. That was the most important relationship which needed to be worked on and which needed to be carefully nurtured so that there was no impediment for flow of information and flow of uh, resources and uh, um, and uh, solutions between the institute and us. So, Professor Ramasajan's role was very crucial in that. But... Let me also say that uh, while Professor Ramasajan said that he had no uh, acquaintance with the commercial world and with the, um, with the corporate affairs, I think that was not uh, entirely correct. Because uh, he displayed a wisdom uh, which comes from having run large institutions like 
Indian Institute of yeah, Science. Yeah, he was also known as the aerospace labs and all that. And uh, having been a professor at IIT before that, so uh, and uh, all over the world, he was known as a scientist. He had that grasp and that uh, vision. For example, even small things, I remember he he, uh, he used to tell me that you must. He used to tell me he used to call me Balu. He said, Balu, you must ensure that your workers are paid better than the uh, other industry workers in 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 your area because. while the others are operating some basic machinery and making some basic products here you are going to make life saving devices so you need people who are not only uh, highly motivated but highly skilled and if you if you have to get highly motivated and highly skilled people you should pay them well so he for example is thinking went down to even nothing missed his attention he saw one day that we we had adopted a ta bill travel allowance the claim bill from some other company i must have taken it from K- ksidc or something he saw all those various things that said you know you have to give taxi voucher auto rickshaw voucher this voucher the train ticket stub must be he said why do you want to do all that you give the fellow a train i mean a travel allowance why are you asking for all these vouchers which is just a waste of time why don't you at least trust people enough to say that if he actually went to mysore and came back whether he walked there or whether he <laughs> went by train or whatever except say in the case of a flight ticket you could ask for term thing if he is going to claim train fare and auto rickshaw fare between two this why do you want to know how many kilometers it was from here to there as if you are going to check up so he used to say have a sense of proportion about all these things don't waste time on on uh, very quotidian information and uh, concentrate focus on the big things So I very rightly had a big said, effect on us on our thinking. She very rightly said he was uh, there was an institution built. Of course, yeah. his own track record yeah. is very evident. It makes yeah. it clear that he was a great institution builder. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I, as a journalist, you know, when I was uh, trying to find out about uh, doing my research on uh, Professor Amishesh, I also discovered that you know that uh, he actually revived the magazine, yeah. uh, science magazine. uh which kind of you know which had become very different i mean yeah. uh, do you have any experience of yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. i remember because uh, professor ramaseshan in the when he international science academy and when the science academy asked him to take over the uh, current science editorship it was a very plain uh, um, you know uh, looking magazine and he transformed it in a very short while because that is the nature of the man he gave everything his full attention I think within one year he must have come to know more about publishing and uh, all the aspects of publishing than publishers who spend a whole lifetime and that. And the result was the current science was uh, lifted out of obscurity to become one of the best science journals in the world. Uh, how long did your association last with your company? I mean, the company. So Professor Ramaseshan um, uh, was chairman of my company for the first ten years. of its life and that was the also the most difficult 10 years and those were the 10 years when we you know when the, when an organism is struggling to survive it develops all its muscles and its exoskeleton and everything just like when a larva turns into a pupa turns into the butterfly so you have to go through those struggling phases through that strug- those struggling phases professor ramseshan was there as a as a guide as a friend philosopher and guide and another aspect of my relationship with professor ramseshan was thanks to my proximity with this great scientist i got to meet other great scientists whom i would never otherwise have been uh, able to meet for example one day he called me in trivandrum he called me from bangalore saying a friend of mine and his wife they are coming to trivandrum to deliver some lecture at the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center he's a he's a cosmologist he's my friend his name is Herman Bondi so please look after him so i uh, those days we didn't have uh, uh, google and all that so uh, however i went and asked somebody who do anybody knows who sir <laughs> i mean herman bondi is and then they said you mean sir herman bondi i said yes they said sir herman bondi is um, when the five cosmologists are mentioned in the 20th century um with the uh, say including einstein and um, um uh, you know people of that level one of the names will be sir herman bondi who was a professor at cambridge and uh, teaching i mean he had this uh, he was the master of churchill college at that time in uh, 
And so Sir Herman and Lady Christine, Lady Christine was a mathematician of great international eminence. They both came down and I remember I spent two days with them. One day I took them to Kovalam and I uh, took them and we ate a seafood at a beachside shack <laughs> and they, they loved it, uh, you know. And then I took them on another to my hometown Kollam and we went on a backwater uh, um, uh, boat ride in a local boat arranged by somebody. And, um, and um, Sir Aman Bondi, he later on he used to tell me that those were among the most memorable experiences which he had because he he drank the local toddy and he ate uh, in the local uh, you know eateries where uh, uh, on the on the waterfront etc. Uh, so another he person he I did, met he through, did not get colon belly. No, I didn't. <laughs> another person through whom I um, whom I met through Professor Ram Session was. Um, um, David uh, Annis, Dr. David Annis. Dr. David Annis was somebody whom I had never heard about. He was an Englishman. He was apparently the person credited with among the highest number of patents in one person's name at that time. And David Annis was a highly product, highly creative and productive inventor. And he had many, many inventions and de devices are all to his name, which he used to license out to the multinational corporations for manufacturing. And I remember Dr. Ram Session telling me, I spent a very enjoyable day with him, taking him around and look and uh, showing him around uh, uh, the place. Another was a Japanese specialist, I forget his name now. He was one of, he was one of the world's leaders in ceramics, bioceramics. And um, um, uh, I, um, Professor Ram Session asked me to look after him also. And I, I, he wanted to, I took him to visit a rubber plantation. Uh, run by Harrison Malayalam in a place called near Tenmala in Mencha Valley. And I remember the uh, the Japanese uh, science, great scientist was so impressed by when he saw the... Because to a Japanese mind which is so orderly and so systematic, the rubber plantation, a well-managed rubber plantation seemed to meet his requirements of how agriculture should be done. It was as close to industry as you could approach agriculture. So I, I am grateful to my acquaintance, uh, the fact that when I, um, since I worked so closely with Professor Ram Session, through him, I got to meet some of the really eminent uh, um, scientists and uh, who, you know, by sheer serendipity, I got to meet them. And each of those meetings I still remains very vivid in my memory. Your mind space must have really enhanced through all these interactions. Uh, so essentially, you became a bureaucrat, and then you, you were in the you were in the uh, from, uh, in the in the uh, business of kind of engaging with people and taking the administration along. Then you decided to become a entrepreneur, and that to an entrepreneur with something linked with science uh, and technology. So, uh, what was the concrete uh, you know impact on your mind space? Will you be able to kind of tell us something about it? Professor Ramsations. About your, your, your the kind oh. of impact that he, this, all these associations had and he knew. Very specifically, I, I, I would attribute to, um, to Professor Ramasation one of the things which I learned very early was to have an open mind. Um, because uh, here was this uh, eminent uh, scientist, world famous scientist, and nothing was too small for his uh, attention. He never felt, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of offended if I hired an uh, ordinary taxi for him, that he didn't want a, a big uh, a vehicle, he didn't want to stay in the biggest room in a hotel. He would take any room, whichever uh, I could afford. And also in terms of, I, I watched him interacting with Professor Ramani and the others at the Chitra Terminal Institute and how he used to get, you know, he used to listen to their technical problem. And then he will ask in a very laconic kind of way why don't you try this and it may completely something out of the blue and that will work right so the he used to then i i realized that professor ram sessions one of his great strengths is he had an open mind he didn't feel he knew it all he didn't think that i know more than somebody else he was truly a humble man though he was a humorous and you know a man of international stature and tremendous personality a real humility because he never put himself above anybody else. And that is the lesson which I hope I learned from him was to keep an open during mind. Your, during your long association with him, did you hazard a guess to what his IQ would have been? <laughs> no. All I know is that it must have been something extraordinary <laughs> because he came from a family which was 
Sir C. V. Raman, Dr. S. Chandrasekhar, um, um, cosmologist, his younger brother S. Chandrasekhar, the liquid crystals discoverer, and his younger brother Pancharatnam, and um, so many others like that. It wouldn't surprise me if, uh, um, you know, if it is his uh, IQ level must have been in the stratosphere. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that, you know, that uh, he was uh, completely open-minded, but there must have been some fixations, you know, somebody who has had such a, uh, you know, such an illustrious career, uh, somebody who engaged with so many disciplines, and especially somebody who came from the science discipline, there must have been some fixations to that personality. It was, was it as though that he did not have any fixation at all? No, uh, you're absolutely right. And the remarkable thing about Professor Ramaseshan was he was so disarming that he would admit to his his uh, weaknesses and his mistakes and his errors. Well, for example, he was telling me once when I was sitting with him uh, having a coffee at the Raman Research Institute uh, lounge, he asked me whether I had ever been to Manipal uh, Institute of Technology and the other medical college. I said, no, I haven't been there, though I know people who have worked there. So he said, uh, you know, he said, Balu, I used to have this prejudice against uh, private educational institutions, and particularly those which were supposed to be taking capitation fees. And I used to think that they are just uh, commercial operations and there is no uh, academic excellence and nothing worthwhile can come out, can we expect out of that place. He said, until one day, one fine day, I was persuaded to go there to give a lecture. So he says, when he reached Manipal, it was late in the evening and his lecture was scheduled for the next morning. So after dinner, he went for a walk, as is his wont, he went for a post-dinner stroll. And it was around 9 o'clock and he noticed he passed one building where all the lights were on and there seemed to be a lot of activity going on inside. So he asked a student who was passing by, what's happening in that building? So that student looked and then that's the library. So he said, uh, why well, is there some uh, event happening? Student said, no. Then he said, why are all the lights on? He said, this library is always on, uh, open, right through the night. And he said, there are students there? He said, yes. There. Then he walked into the library and he walked around the library and saw dozens of, in fact, probably hundreds of students um, sitting at their desks, preparing, taking notes, reading, cons discussing in low voices, etc. And he said he came back thinking to himself, how profoundly wrong he had been. While there may be very a few commercially minded institutions, there are also institutions like the Manipal uh, educational institutions, which put all that money to good use. They built a superb library, and that library is kept open all night for students and faculty to use. So, I mean, what, but that was one of the most endearing and um, um, disarming things about Professor Ramasajan was the willingness to admit that uh, he, may, he may have been wrong. And, the, to, and he will stand corrected. And I noticed this even in a couple of other instances uh, where in his judgment of people, for instance, where he was, didn't have a very good opinion of a particular person who was working with me. And then uh, I had to remonstrate very strongly with him. And then a few months later, he came, sought me out and told me he was wrong and that I was right. Fantastic. So that is a... This Manipal you, incident, when it happened, how old must he, must he have been? He had already retired from... Uh, he, he, was, he was ready to correct Zeeval at, at the... Yeah. At, uh, he was in his uh, 60s. Late 60s, or probably. Yeah, late 60s. So that's how great men kind of learn from, even from uh, uh, the stray strolls, you know? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, some, some other aspect of Professor Ramishishan, because, you know, uh, I happened to kind of read about, read up his uh, Raman, the first C.V. Raman memorial lecture that he delivered. And he says uh, as follows to Raman, I mean, uh, Professor Ramakrishnan is talking about Sir C. V. Raman. He says, to Raman, scientific activity was the fulfillment of an inner need. His approach to science was one of passion, curiosity and simplicity. It was an attempt to understand to him, it was an attempt to understand. To him, science was based on independent thought combined with hard work. Science was a personal endeavor, an aesthetic pursuit. And above all, a joyous experience. Did Professor Ramakrishnan have an inclination to music or any other forms of aesthetic uh, expression? Well, I, I think he had them in abundance. Uh, this uh, inclination, I mean, this uh, uh, this aptitude and the inclination for 
beauty in nature, beauty in um, in its surroundings, in the elegance, in um, you know, in a beautiful garden, etc. So while it was Professor Ra Dr. C. V. Raman who um, planted those beautiful gardens at Raman Research Institute, Professor Ramaseshan, I think, took as much pleasure in pointing out to me all those um, uh, gardens um, and all the flowers. And all. I think probably Bangalore's best garden must be the Raman Research Institute gardens. And that continued even when um, after Sir C. V. Raman died and C. V. Raman's son was the director of uh, Raman Research Institute. Uh, but uh, Professor Ramasajan was the emeritus uh, professor there. So uh, even, uh, for instance, uh, Professor Ramasajan was a person, he dressed very simply, but there, there was an elegance about him. If you went to his home, it was very simple home in um, palace uh, uh, grounds or some place like that in Bangalore. I, I used to be a regular visitor there as long as he was alive. And um, the house also reflected that in terms of all those beautiful little pieces which had been collected, photographs, rare photographs of science, rare books uh, gifted to him by great scientists from across the world, all those things. Uh, but everything was arranged with the, with the, he was an estate in every sense of the term. And, that, and realizing that, I mean, I, I think I had that same aptitude, but after hearing this from Professor Ramasajan and knowing that he liked the office to be neat, the, comp the factory co campus to be always spotless, etc. I used to strive to make sure that it always was like that. So these were the kind of lesser known aspects of the, you know, very important lessons that we pick up, which are, um, one may think, uh, this is not very important for a scientist. And for Dr. Ansation, definitely science was uh, something beyond, uh, uh, even a, beyond a profession. It was a calling for him. And uh, I think there was not a moment in the day when he ceased being a scientist. He was always curious about why something was happening, why something, you, you know, that kind of thing was part of his very lifeblood. So I think he inculcated entirely what he was talking, what he, the qualities which he was talking about uh, um, with reference to Professor um, C. V. Raman. Um, I can't think of anybody else who um, absorbed all those, embodied all those uh, qualities like Professor Ramseshan. Thank you very much for this uh, yeah, interaction on Professor Ramseshan. Uh, we will continue with another episode of People and Places in the days to come. Please keep watching.